So I'm gearing up to go to Arizona. Um, I was going to see my new favorite bloomer, who was my date on Saturday night, tonight as well. But I just called it off uh, because I'm feeling sluggish. And I've had a few um, stress responses to recognizing that I'm going to be going into the dragon's lair. I'm going to be going into Arizona with a mother whose dementia has now made her uh, combative openly and without edit. So I have to d totally agree with her, say uh-huh, keep my mouth shut, and recognize that this is not a normal person. This is a combative, confused, frightened little girl trapped in an aging body. And this is my mother, Calamity Jane. So, um, I did not want her to be in a assisted living home. Uh, if it meant my father would be there as well. And my sisters were hell bent on getting both of them into an assisted living facility. And I suggested that we d talk to my father to find out what he really wants. Talk to my mother, find out what she really wants. Because decisions were being made for her. And as it turns out, she wants to stay at the home. And my dad does too, really. They weren't ready to go into that cold facility with the north-facing windows. Without any direct sunlight, you know. And drafty, you know, an assisted living home. That's the very basics. So now my sister Quirky is saying things like, you're the ones that wanted to my brother and I. You're the ones that wanted um, our parents to stay at the home. You deal with it. Like she's done everything she can. Basically, she's looted and driving a vehicle back to Texas with stuff in it, like a Pensy truck. Um, <clears throat> some ranch oak. Furniture bunk beds for her daughter so that her daughter can have um, a kid's room, you know, for her future children. It's all good. Um, but I know that I'm going to be having to really take some time out from my exposure to my mother. And I know I will witness her yelling at my dad. And I am going to be unable to stop any of this. So, in talking to the family on the group text, which is my brother, my sister, uh, my sibling, my, my offspring, and then one of my sister's offspring. So my son and my daughter, and then Corky's oldest daughter. She's got a daughter, son, daughter. So yeah, I'm gearing up. It's like, it's rather tiring. I'm weary. And I doubt my cat capacity to be able to not lose it. So I'm facing that. And I know that this is going to be one of the biggest challenges of my life is handling of uh, the verbal diatribe from a parent who is pathologically narcissistic and now creating suffering because of dementia that is worse now that she's had her stroke now she did have four of the shots um in 20 20 2021 her last one in 2022 of april she did get endocarditis other shots causation or correlation it's not determined yet but people ought to be having that conversation. Would she have had such large blood clots had she not had 
the mRNA vaccine? That's the question. That's all it is. It's just a question. And the answer is quite evident online that it is hard to determine it. <laughs> so it can't be determined. But endocarditis is very rarely something that you just get out of the blue, I believe. So I'm over that um, <clears throat> brief romance I had with uh, being with a younger man. I imagined that we would have a lot of fun. He was a road tripper. Um, and then, but then I realized there's no way that I can build a life with him because his life was clearly selfish. He wanted to have a small apartment, as teeny tiny, so that he uh, could get his pilot's license but then he wanted to hang out at my condo and have me make sandwiches. <laughs> um, and I had to call off the relationship because it was unsatisfactory to me. I wasn't getting enough of my needs met and his were increasingly childlike. Like I was the mother and he was the son and the, the ability for him to please a woman in the sexual department is highly unlikely. So he was one of those types that um, did not commit to a relationship and therefore had a box of condoms. And there were three different types in there. There were four of three different types. And there were several of them missing. There was a whole entire packet missing of four, which was the ultra thin ones. And he chose on me a textured one with a chemical lubricant. And the video subsequent to this one, I felt a stinging right away and I did not stop the um, action until I was really quite certain it was never going to get any better than painful. I just got out of the shower. My hair is drying. So since it was going to be painful and, and uh, nothing else, <laughs> I ended it. And uh, that's when he came over to my place and he wanted to hang out and work. And I just did my thing. I had, I had work to do. And then he like wants food. So it's like, okay, well, I'll make some sandwiches. I made some grilled cheese sandwiches with organic sourdough and this really wonderful uh, cheese I had gotten from the local farmer's market. And no, no small potatoes, very, very nice high-end sandwiches. <laughs> but then I let him know um, that I did not respond well to our encounter and that I will not be with him because he insists on wearing plastic latex over himself and it causes me uh, great discomfort and ail ailment to my psyche and being. And I now realize that it wasn't just the physical act, it was being with somebody that was that uptight. It created a soul sickness. Now, I met him in the neighborhood, so he wasn't an online person. I would never um, have gone with a guy that was 40-something and um, never ever. But it was fun and exciting, no truth be known, to hang out with a younger person. And we were enjoying the rapport. We were enjoying the banter that we would have going out. So, um, you know, he said he thought it was really sexy to be with me and have people like, hmm, are they together or what? And I was enjoying it too for that very, it was a flirtation ship really. And I knew in the back of my mind it wouldn't last and, and that my friend Kim, who knows me, she calls me a force to contend with. <laughs> She goes, Cat, get ready. Don't set yourself up for disappointment. But I was disappointed. 
Um, and yet it, it happened at a fortuitous time um, because we'd only been together a month, which was too soon to have sex, girls. One month is too soon to have sex. If you haven't slept with the guy, like just sleep holding each other. If you haven't played strip poker or something where you can actually see how comfortable they are um, without clothes on. If they haven't done any of the things that they promised they wanted to do with you, like take you and have dance lessons with you, then uh, they had no business jumping your bones. So, again, I was like sort of a little bit too anxious uh, to experience what he had been promising me. He had been promising me and telling me how he desired me and we had conversations and so it came to my surprise uh, that night that he wanted to sheath up and I hadn't had sex for um, a year and a quarter. And he said he hadn't had it for a year, but I'm sure he lied. I'm sure the only sex he has is condom sex. I'm sure he does one night stands and he is very weird. He is, he is a weird guy. He doesn't have any, any wine glasses. Um, so, my curiosity, you know, it's always my curiosity. And just learning again what my boundaries are. But truth be known, I was looking forward to the sensual experience. Um, and having been with an old, older men, uh, and as a woman, it's a lot of work sometimes helping these guys maintain an erection. That's the truth. So to have a guy ready and uh, firm for a woman who has had to deal with flaccid men who've been drinking too much, it's exciting to have had that prospect. <laughs> that prospective penis. <laughs> Truth be known, okay? I'm not shying away from what's true. I'm going to tell it. So, um... I will be keeping this one shorter uh, and releasing these a little bit at a time. I've run out of G's and it took like hours for my last video to upload. So I'm going to keep them also under 15 minutes. <laughs> um, yes, so I had to cancel the date for this evening. I'm getting my game face on. I'm getting ready to go to Tucson. I know what I'm going to be dealing with. I will have an exit strategy and I will have coping skills ready to go. And we're going to tune in and talk about all of that. And I'm taking you on the adventure with me because it's the only way I'm going to be able to handle it. So stay tuned.